Welcome to another GM Tips. GM Rick here, and I hope you're having a great week so far. I know I am. Uh, this week's topic, with Hugo in the background and many GM watching while munching biscuits, I was going to preface that. Uh, this week is going to be, like as promised on the last one, Blood of the Moon. And it's a topic title that was used by Paizo Publishing. I did not coin it. Paizo Publishing did. In fact, the author of Blood of the Moon... I love that one. Uh, the major authors are Tim Akers, uh, Neil Lith, uh, Litherland, David Ross, and Tork Shaw. Now, uh, Blood of the Moon. What are we talking about? I think you can guess on that. Wares, or lycanthropes, or lycanthropy in general, and using lycanthropes as NPCs and bad guys. PCs, you can figure it out yourself as player characters and as, as a GM no matter the system. Now, again, this can be Fantasy Realm. This can be um, D20 Modern. It could be a D20 Future. It could be a Hero Game. It could be many other different types of systems like Savage Worlds, Fate. Um, I don't know if Numenera has them or not. I don't think they do in the Ninth World. Um, but the Strange does. The Strange will have them. So there are some systems. Uh, the Dresden Files, you could use it in that game. The Dresden Files... Of course, that's a huge deal there. They have a lot of run-ins with them. Uh, so, with the different settings, the nice thing about lycanthropy is it spans from fantasy all the way through science fiction. And it has many different spins on it. Um, Bitten is a show on sci-fi recently that they did. Um, oh, what was the other one? Um, Being Human. Being Human did a dive into it. Um, what was the other one there? I'm trying to think. Uh, uh, True Blood did a spin on it. Of course, our famous ones, the the famous movie with the famous Kristen Stewart in it. And I'm not going to mention the movie because every one of you are screaming it out right now. Had, had the handsome wear uh, Native Americans. He... Sh um, I know, right? I'm, I'm kind of cheesing over some of these. The, the great thing is lycanthropy is so well known, but at the same time it has really taken the zest and the zip and the fear out of the lycanthrope from players. They kind of see them as common, everyday things that they can handle with a little bit of silver sheen or silver or silver bullets. Um, even Underworld. Underworld tried. It brought the lichens back, and it gave them a little fear factor because some of those lichens were berserkers, and they were nuttier and fruitcakes, and they could take some serious damage and, and take out quite a few vampires in the process. So keep in mind, don't let the myths and the, the shows just gloss over these creatures. They are very fearsome. They come in so many flavors, and I love that Paizo Publishing did this. I will bet you in Curse of Strahd and, and in some of the other Wizards of the Coast, they did a dive into it. I know they did in 3.5 and 3.0. So lycanthropy is a scary, scary thing. It's a scary affliction and curse. Um, everything from skinwalkers to true lycanthropes to... The wear turned like cantos. They're all very different. And so becoming a lycanthrope is probably the most difficult thing for anybody. So keep that in mind. When you play in your campaigns, don't make lycanthropy of, oh, you get to turn into a werewolf now and use all that to your advantage. Oh, no, no, no. That's not how it's ever worked. But yet we, in the playing side of the game, want to manipulate our GMs of taking a bad situation and making it in our favor. So GMs and DMs, be very warned. Um, ladies and gentlemen, please be very warned. Because I'm going to tell you this now. Don't be manipulated that the character gets to control their transformation, gets to control how they act while they are turned, under the full moon, they don't. That is on you. And you can make it as nightmarish and garish as you want. See, everybody thinks that they're going to get this wonderful benefit. 
And I'm going to read a section from you in here because I think this sums up real lycanthropy. And, and by the way, to you four authors and everybody else that helped on this book from Paizo, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And again, thank you for doing this. And there's a reason why. If you seek the fate of the lycanthrope, shunned, hated, and feared throughout most of the world, and that's any world, not just Galarian, not just the Inner Sea, not just the continent of Aviston and Garen and Kazmaron and Arcadia. This is Faerun. This is Greyhawk. This is the 13th Age world. This is um, Ghost Walk. This is um, Dungeon... Uh, uh, huh. Uh, la, 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 la. Dungeon World. Sorry. Blanked on it. This is um, Hero System. This is in your um, Marvel system and DC systems. And all the other systems that you can run, they are feared and hated. They are not something to be revered. The werewolf is not patted on the back for being the big old hero or the werebear. No. No. They aren't true blood where everybody goes, yay! <laughs> no. Um, hmm. um, these misbegotten monsters of the night live hard and often short lives. Shame plagues the best of them for their nocturnal bouts of amnesia and any forgotten misdeeds they may have committed, while the worst lycanthropes revel in the madness of the transformation. The following section explores some of the most common ways an unfortunate individual might contract and cure lycanthropy, as well as suggestions for groups seeking to play lycanthropic characters in their campaigns. I'm going to tell you this now. There are whole groups on whole worlds that are dedicated to destroying these beasts. Do not think because a player gets turned that it's their best day ever. It is not. And you as the GM, that, that statement right there, if you want to memorize a statement, memorize that. Because that is what you need to convey to them. This is a curse. This is a nightmare. You are not a true wear that controls your transformation. You don't control your hunger. If you ever control it. That's the whole gist of this. You may never get it under control. And even if you do, you will still be hunted. Um, you can get it by curse, by infection, or inheritance. So, infection. The easiest and most common way to contract lycanthropy is by coming too close to a creature afflicted with the curse. Bite scratches, and even in a tiny percentage of cases, ingesting a blood from a lycanthropic foe can't, may all result in the malady spreading from one carrier to a new victim. Once exposed, the newly made carriers likely don't realize the extent of their affliction until the next full moon. And without divinations, it is likely that their moment of transformation is the first um, is the first victims uh, know of their actual curse. Okay. Hiding lycanthropy. This is a beautiful section in here. Um. I love, even more than that, the lycanthropic characters, because this hits it. Players hoping to play lycanthropic characters should first discuss this prospect with their GM. The powers of a lycanthrope can be unbalancing for games that assume the standard power level for PCs. In most cases, playing a skinwalker character can allow the player to evoke the flavor of of a lycanthrope without throwing off the balance of the campaign. That's why skinwalkers are great to put into your game. Um, however, that said, a GM may decide to adjust his campaign or her campaign to allow for more lycanthropic PCs. Okay? However, in all these things, players of lycanthropic characters will, would do well to keep the following implications in mind. Hunted. Although lycanthropes are powerful creatures, they are far from invincible, and a band of lyc lycanthropic PCs might find themselves the target of dangers and threats normal adventures would rarely encounter. Lycanthrope slayers are prevalent throughout the inner sea region, or any world in that matter. 
And where creature PCs who make their powers known to the wrong sorts of people may end up the targets of witch hunts, bounty hunters, or zealous monster killers. Silver. While defensive abilities of were creatures are formidable, silver damage reduction can be relatively easy to overcome as silver weapons are among the cheapest and most readily available in the lands, as well as poisons that go along with it. You cannot control when your character turns. You will turn on the first moon, and you will turn on your own fellow PCs. And that is a nightmare that players need to realize. They don't. They don't look at that. They don't see this immense power. Yes, okay, weapons to battle them are common. But put some class levels behind a lycanthrope, and they become very formidable. And in a pack, they become really formidable. And they do attack in numbers. They are not lone hunters. They are pack hunters. So keep in mind, you are putting yourself in grave danger. Now, again, they're not vampires. Vampires are, in most cases, a little bit pow more powerful. The blood of, the, the blood of um, the vampire is much more so. But let me just say this. These are still very formidable. Now, skinwalkers are interesting. Skinwalkers have some of the traits, but yet do not totally embody being a lycanthrope. And most people in campaigns are aware of skinwalkers. Um, they are known and kind of still shunned because they are the progeny of wares. But they have more humanistic features than the wares do themselves. A true wear is formidable beyond all belief. I ran one in a campaign, and it literally took it to our players. Our war priest was lucky to survive, and he did, but he went down after the hits. He took severe hits, one after the other. Now, fortunately, the players were high enough level to know to have the cures with them, to heal them. But he took some serious butt kicking. Keep in mind, GMs and DMs, lycanthropes should be that. They are formidable. Don't ever think they're going to be an easy pick-off for your players. They're not. So when you're facing these type of things, just keep in mind that you really, really, really want to go this route. Because I'm going to tell you now, it is scary to think about. And I can tell you that... Uh, I, I would play aware with absolute, just malicious intent. While they're human, they're, they're not trying to take out the players necessarily. But they're watching them. Were rats, were boars. They're often in gangs. They're often thugs. They're sometimes guilds. They're watching. They're watching for marks. They're watching to grow their numbers. They're watching to add a new mark to their, their potential group. They would love to add to their numbers under their master which is usually the, the lycanthrop that, or lycanthropes that turn them, the true bloods. And so keep that in mind. They're there. And when your characters are afflicted, there's many negatives to them. So make it a dangerous thing. Make it known to the players that, boy, being turned by these things is not this glamorous thing. You have zero control. And, and you will gain very, at best, maybe 20% or 25% of the time controlling your turn. Which means when you're turned, you are not in control. You are not cognizant. Friends are no longer your friends. They are prey, just like anything else. And unless they're lycanthropes too, they're prey. And you will eat them just as easily as anything else. Um, and, and that you're not going to be good under that alignment. Most, most wares alignments, with the exception of a wear bear, and the wear tigers and sometimes the wear alley crocodiles. Almost all the wares are evil. And they're not going to be your buddy. They are vicious, bloodthirsty creatures. And at best, you keep your eyes peeled behind you, watching those that deal with you. Make them that sort of characters. that They are often confident, brash, or they're really cowardly. It just depends on the type. Like, for instance, let's go through the different types. Because there are so many types that are out there. The werewolf is the most well-known. 
they are vicious predators just like a wolf. They will look for an opportunity to take down a lone prey and destroy it. Um, the crocodiles, they are more of a predator too, but they stay closer to the water where they can move quickly and, and really take a creature out. So they prefer a watery, swampy area. The were tigers, they are what they are. They can, they have the tiger blood in them. So they are a vicious lot. And they even showed those on true blood. And that was a very true, true form of how a were tiger would be. Um, were boars, bullies, strength. They love to butt horns or, or butt uh, teeth and really go at each other. Were sharks, vicious bloodthirsty, will eat you alive kind of creatures. Um, the were bears, they are protectors. Like a mama bear or papa bear, they protect the territory. And they're often very ferocious when guarding that particular territory. The were rats, they are most likely in urban areas and they are nefarious in their thinking. Um, the were bats, also criminals, very dastardly thinking creatures. This is the majority of your wares, okay? And you will come up against them and you will face some nasty things. Um, think of the Aztecs. They had the, the panther um, warriors. Those were the were creatures, the were panthers. <laughs> and so they were pretty nasty. Serrated uh, obsidian swords, and they were vicious to a fault. And they were just bloodthirsty killers. So keep that in mind. These kind of creatures, you need to play them with a ferocity. And like I said, they're not going to be one, they'll be many. And usually they're working together to, to somehow infiltrate a society or an area and take it over and dominate it and make the rest of the regulars in that area that prey. And they can, will only, you know, raise their numbers when they want to add. Otherwise, they'll devour their prey. So keep that in mind. And, and again, very nasty things. Um, normal weapons don't harm them. Magic weapons harm them, but not like silver does. Silver is how you put an end to them. Magic weapons do damage, and it leaves its lasting damage, but it doesn't necessarily kill them. Silver, alchemical silver, mithril, other types of silvers, that kills them. That's a dead death sentence over time for them. It poisons them, it keeps them from regenerating, just like you saw in Underworld like that. Until they get it out of their body, they cannot heal. So keep that in mind. Now, where would you encounter things like this? I would set up, like I say, different societies. Like one encounter thing we came against that would be interesting for you would be like space pirates that are wares, okay? Or space marauders or bandits or maybe a rebel faction. Um, for superhero games, you could do like an, a criminal cult from a, a lost area of the world that has risen and now is looking to take over and raise their territory um, if you're going to do something in the 1800s, again, you could do pirates, um, you can do sailors, you could do natives from different areas that could be those type of creatures. Um, from the medieval campaigns, where do you want to go? <laughs> Pretty much fantasy campaigns, you can take it any way you want to take it. Um, I've had them from anywhere from their, their lone groups, of, uh, a small group, maybe a, a, a harrying group that protecting an area. Or it could be something like a guild or a black market group or a slavers group. It just depends on what you want to do with them. There's so many ideas. Um, keep in mind, bite very deadly. Again, it talks about it in here and, and the, the time frame. It gives you the moon cycle. I love the lunar chart because it tells you when the trues and the others are most powerful. So that lunar cycle calendar is huge. Um, make one for your world if you don't have to. Make one for each world. Uh, again, it's a little bit different when you got a space-based campaign. Um, they talk about different things that hurt them and uh, the oracle type of thing. So you got lycanthropic gear that you can get, basically go after the lycanthrope or help the lycanthrope with. It can be used either way. Keep this in mind. This is a great book to own, like I say. I know I give you a lot of Paizo books. There are other ones that as I get across other systems that I do that too, uh, for like Cobalt Press and some others. There's definitely some great stuff here. Um, and they talk about just the traits of each one of these type of kin. You, you know in the books, they tell you in the Monster Guides what you know the lycanthropic change cycle is, what their stats are for different things, half changes and everything else. Make sure you read up on these. Really take and, and build up 
to characters meeting this. Put some fear into them. Put them in areas that they don't have a lot of help to come to help the party when they stumble across them. Make it an encounter to remember. Make it one where they're on the edge of their seat, either battling these or running from these. And give them that idea that when they get bit or they get scratched, will they change? Don't know. How can you detect it? Not without spells or other types of blood work. You don't know. And you could, and you may not. So what do you do? Do you go get the cure or do you not get the cure? Don't make the cure an easy thing readily available to help them. And make it always at the back of their, nipping at the back of them, that there are these creatures wanting to take them out. Hope you enjoyed this one. Again, we'll call it blood of the, we'll, we'll call it where Lycan, or we'll call them Lycanthropes, Blood of the Moon. And, and I'll give that uh, title to Paisa when I mention it in the thing, because they really did a great job of charming it. Thanks again, folks, and have a great weekend again.